So this is going to be a quick instructional on how to put together one of the carbon series foil. Uh, this one in particular is a 2300, but they're all the same in terms of how they go together. And it seems like a pretty straightforward process, and it is, but I encourage you to watch this just to know a few of the fine details on how it goes together and how to get everything to fit properly. So the very first two pieces that we're going to be putting together is the mast, and we're going to put that into the carbon base. And that goes in with these two M8 bolts here with a five millimeter wrench. Now all the bolts to put the foil together come with the foil. Um, you're just going to have to supply your own wrench. So this is a five millimeter Allen wrench. Pretty much anywhere will have this as well as these bolts. They're very commonly found. There's nothing special about them, but the bolts are included. So to get started, take out the mass and it goes into this slot and so obviously you can line that up and it's a extremely extremely tight fit and now this base plate was molded straight from this mast so there may be a little bit of flashing inside of the insert here and that might sort of peel off it'll kind of just look like translucent tape don't worry about it if you hear just a slight little something kind of peeling and folding it's most likely that but usually it's not a problem at all and so we're just going to place the mast in and try to keep it as vertical as we can and just put some downward pressure on it and give it a tap or two on the top now you don't really want to aggressively force this we don't want to be rocking it back and forth trying to get it all the way down because it's just not good for your mass and it's not good for the carbon base. So the best way to do it is I just have this sticking in a few millimeters. It's not that far down because it's pretty tight. So the best way to do it is just to then insert your two bolts in there and give a turn on one bolt, a turn on the next, and it'll slowly cinch this connection tight without doing too much at once. It'll just pull it down nice and evenly. And one extremely helpful tip that I have, especially for those salt water guys, is before you put in your bolts, any of these bolts, especially the mass bolts, it's a great idea to just give this bolt a coating of WD-40 or anything similar to this product. Because what's the, what it's going to do is it's going to just lightly coat the bolt surface and then also the area where you thread it into and it's going to drive out water. It's going to prevent water from really getting into there. And it's going to make it very easy to tighten these down really, really tight. And then also be able to get them back out a month, a week, a few days after using it. Because everyone's been there where you tighten, tighten something up and it's been in the saltwater environment and you leave it for months and months and months and it's corroded a bit and now it's not coming out. So I always recommend to just give them a light coat as you put them in and then kind of check up on it from time to time. If you're in the salt, definitely pull them all out, give them a wash and then a recoat for the next use. If you're fresh water, I've coated them once and used them an entire summer and been able to take them out just fine. That was mostly in a lake environment, but for my salt setup, I always make sure to take out all the hardware wash it down, and then reassemble with more, a little bit, a light coating of WD. It's just a preventative measure. It's better to be safe than sorry. So really, I mean, just a light, that's it. Just a little light coat. We don't want it dripping. Just get a little bit in there. It'll really, really help out. So I'm just putting these in and tightening up the threads. I do not recommend using a power drill of any sort for any of these just because, again, it's better to be safe than sorry. Use a hand tool, use a screwdriver. A power tool can lead to stripping the heads of the bolts. Maybe you didn't get the threads lined up correctly and now you're stripping threads and that's just a problem you don't wanna deal with. So we can see I have these pretty much seated all the way in. And now at this point, I'm just going to do one turn on one side flip and come over to the other and do it on the other and we can see our base plate is slowly moving up along the mast and slowly getting tight now this is probably just going to be more so for the first couple times 
once you insert and take the mast out several times, it kind of works away that flashing. And then you'll be able to really sh get it all the way down and seated, most likely without having to do this every single time. But this is how I recommend to do it if that joint is nice and tight. Just slowly creep it up. I'm just going right now, honestly, a quarter turn on each bolt. And when it's all the way down, you'll know because you can't turn it anymore. And that's generally what I like to do, especially on the mast to base connections and the mast to fuselage connections. So it's been a few more, a uh, couple more seconds here and I now have this tight. I cannot crank this down any tighter. So I know that the base is fully seated down there. That's something we wanna just take note of is make sure that it's all the way seated and all the way tight to where you really can't tighten that any further. So now we're going to be inserting the carbon fuselage into the wing tunnel. And we first wanna make sure that there's no obstruction in there. There's no sand jammed all the way down in there. There's no gunk. So you wanna make sure that in there is clean because again, it's an extremely tight, perfectly molded fit. And so once we know that is clean and clear, I'm going to push it in as far as I can. And this is a nice soft surface. We wouldn't want to be doing this on pavement or anything hard, but I'm just going to push down a little bit here on the fuselage to get it all the way in. You can see that the inserts are nicely lined up. So I know that the fuselage is all the way in. And once that's done, just a couple of M6 screws here. And again, guys, use hand tools, don't use power tools. This way you can ensure that everything is lined up and your threads are tight. And so these I'm just going to tighten. I'm not gonna go crazy on them because it's really just, these three bolts are really just preventing our mast from backing out of the tunnel. So that's in there nice and tight. Moving on to the stabilizer. So the stabilizer, same thing, just a couple of M6 screws. I'm gonna put those in there. Flip this over, line it up. And once again, guys, use the hand tools to do this. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room here in the stabilizer. We can see this right here, right? So I'm just going to step back just a little bit, line everything up. And once I see that it's straight, then I'm going to really come in and give these a nice solid turn. And now it's gonna be held in place perfectly straight with the rest of the foil. All right, so we're almost done here and now it's time to get our mass onto our fuselage. First, we wanna make sure it's going the right way. So if we take a look at the profile here, we can see that it's thinner towards the back. So make sure that it's pointing towards the back of the foil. And this is just going to rest right here on this machined flat area. That's the perfect mount for it. And again, I would recommend lightly coating these in WD-40 or something similar to that. All right, guys, I had to switch up the angle here just to get a better shot. So again, just with our wrench, tightening this down. And so for this connection here, the strength really is coming from the clamping force of these bolts pulling the mast into it. So this one, we're really, really going to want to tighten up. Again, not excessively, but just make sure that these are very snug. There we go. So just about like that. Just nice and snug with a wrench. Okay, so now the foil is put together. Pretty simple. Just a couple little tricks there to make sure it's done properly and you can see we have the foil ready to go. Now it's time to just put it onto whatever board and it's ready to ride. Now taking it apart, it's if you know how to put it together, you know how to take it apart. The only spot that I'm going to show you is taking the fuselage out of the wing. Again, it's a very tight joint, so it's going to require a little bit of, it's gonna require your feet. That's the easiest way I have found to do it. But if you have two people, very easy to do. 
Okay, so we now have the foil stripped of everything but just the wing and the fuselage, and now it's time to pop it off. If you had two people, I would just have one guy grab the front, front wing and the other guy kind of yank it and pull it out that way. Definitely don't use a soft rubber mallet or anything like that to get it off. Um, you might end up damaging your trailing edge, and we don't want to do that to the wing. So first thing first, we want to make sure that the bolts are not in the wing anymore. I've done this before, and been yanking and yanking and wondering why the wings not coming out and it's because I forgot to take the bolts out so remember to take these bolts out and the easiest way to do it by yourself is I am sitting down I'm not going to sit on the dirty shop floor but if I was at the beach I'd be sitting down in the sand or something like that and whether you have shoes on or not I have my gross working sneakers um, but barefoot works just fine I just like to just put my toes right on the back of the trailing edge there and just kind of hold the fuselage and then just pop it forward. And there we go, it kind of pops right out. So it's a, again, it's a very, very tight fitting joint. Um, the bolts are just kind of there to hold it in place so it doesn't slide outwards. So it is going to be a very sticky joint, but it does pop out with relative ease. And lastly, again, our base to mast connection can be very very tight so just like the wing sometimes it's easier just to stand on either side of the base plate and then vertically pull up on the mast to pop it out that's generally how I do it sometimes it takes there we go just a little bit of shimmy side to side and out it pops all right so we're fully disassembled again and it was a pretty easy process to put it together pretty straightforward but there's a couple areas which I showed you to hopefully give you some tips to make it a little bit easier and as always take care of your stuff and it will take care of you so if you're in the salt water I definitely recommend after using it taking it apart giving it a rinse with fresh water um, that's just definitely gonna help out that's the rule of thumb with anything going into the marine environment but that's about it so hopefully that helps out and you now know how to properly put together your foil